pretty much at the midway point of the season in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain. These are rounds at seven and eight coming at you live from Alton Park. My name is Conor Maddock and I'm joined by the ever wonderful Paul Smith as we keep the ball rolling during this season of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain. And, uh, and Paul, we're here at Alton Park and uh, I hear that you might be a little bit of a fan of this track. Greatest track in the world. You heard it here first. Um, yes, I absolutely love this venue. It's a fantastic circuit, and uh, it's it's a real uh, a real test of drivers' ability. Uh, Joe Winkelhock, who back in 1993 once coined it as the Mini Nurburgring, and it's got everything. It's got undulations. It's got tight top corners. It's got fast sweeping corners as well. What more could you want from a venue? Yeah, absolutely, and it plays host to round seven and eight of the championship here in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup, Great Britain. And uh, it's sort of been a very interesting road getting up towards this point, of course. We started the season at uh, Silverstone, the Grand Prix layout of Silverstone to be exact, and then we went to the very short and frantic circuit of Brands Hatch Indy, then to Snedston, and then, of course, now to Alton Park. Uh, of course, you know, developments at Snedston made this championship just that slightly more interesting, Paul, given the zero-point score for Sebastian Job uh, in that second race of things. So even though we were talking about this before the show, that this is starting to turn into the Sebastian Job championship, that result shows that he, he isn't invaluable. It's not infallible. Uh, it was uh, quite a bit of a, a, a move that we, he attempted. He was trying to get back at Will Chadwick for for a dive that, uh, that Will had made on Sebastian. So he was trying to uh, get that place back, and yeah, it didn't quite work out for Sebastian in that second um, second race of the day. And it was certainly a thrill ride to see who ended up winning that last race. Yeah, it, it certainly was a, an intriguing finish and narrows the championship very, very slightly. Of course, Joe is still dominating, but we'll get on to that in, in just a couple of moments. Here's the format for today. Drivers uh, currently uh, have open qualifying underway, 20 minutes to be exact, to be able to set their fastest time to set their place on the grid for race number one, which will be 25 minutes. Then we'll have a bit of a break of 10 minutes in between uh, the race one and race two, another 25 minute race, but we have the top six reverse grid. And remember, there's more than one championship over the course of this season now. There's the Pro Championship and of course the AM Championship as well. Bonus points for pole position as well. So that means that this qualifying session is just worth that little bit more than it otherwise would be. But let's have a look at the pro standings then because, well, we talked a little bit about it. Well, uh, Sebastian and Joe, 62 points right now ahead of William Chadwick's 46 points. And then it's a bit of a rift between those two and Matt Emery as well in third place. But Cedric not too far behind, four points behind in fact, uh, of a top three finish in the pro standings uh, so far. So that's how things stack up, Paul. Um, Will Chadwick is really keeping himself in this at the moment. He's had a few consistent finishes over the course of this season. However, I think the aim for the second half of this season for Will is to get race wins, get P2s. Yeah, he, he needs to get those wins over Sebastian if he wants any hope of, of catching up. I mean, the only reason, as we said, that he caught up slightly on Sebastian was because of that uh, zero points he scored, uh, Sebastian scored in race number two last time out. So, uh, yeah, there's some names in that, though, that that you'd think would be a lot closer up. I mean, Josh Thompson's had an absolute nightmare out there. And, in fact, um, yeah, he's not scored points since the opening round of the championship. Yeah, absolutely. And well, let's have a look at the AM standings, standings as well, because remember, there are two championships here in the Porsche Esports Career Cup, Great Britain. This is the AM, these are the AM standings. So we've got Leo Garaboli, who has impressed us so far this season, Paul. He's on, on regular occasions, he's been up there inside of that top 10, fighting in amongst some of the pro drivers. So he's definitely someone that's impressed me over the course of this season. However, you do have Gareth Higgins there, not too far behind in terms of the AM standings, and Brandon Blakesley in third place at the moment. But it's great to see those two names, Garibaldi and Higgins, at, at the front of the AM standings, because we know, in a different universe, they could just have been in the pro category. Well, Higgins uh, impressed me last time out. He had a very mature uh, display out there, did a very good job and uh, was able to outscore both Garibaldi, who didn't have the best of days, and Brandon Blakesley, who had an even worse day than Garibaldi last time out at Snetterton. So uh, this round, it's an opportunity for some drivers to, to maybe get themselves a, a good result or two. 
Yeah, and uh, well, double 10 point finish there for uh, Gareth Higgins, top scorer in the AM category in both of those last races. But uh, let's have a look at where we're at here today. This is uh, Alton Park. Of course, the international layout as it is uh, here in iRacing. So basically, the full layout as uh, we had our way into Old Hall Corner for the uh, the first turn of the track. And then we descend down the hill through Denton's, through Cascades. And then we go on our way down towards uh, that uh, Island Bend and the Shell Oil Corner as well. As a little bit of an adaption compared to the shortened layout that we usually see in some uh, cases. Yeah, it's a, a fantastic venue and uh, one that uh, I love to keep coming back to. It's, a, it's the best circuit in the world, as I said, and there's, there's a reason why. It's just wonderful. Perhaps someone who's better placed is uh, to be able to explain this circuit is, uh, well, we have a track guide for you to go and do that. So let's hear from one of our drivers. Hi there, my name is Leo Gariboli, drive for the Team PGZ Porsche 992 GT3 Cup car and welcome to round 4 of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain Championship at Alton Park. Alton is the quintessential British circuit, having been a happy home for just about all forms of motor racing for almost 70 years. The old school fast flowing corners are amazing to drive, but passing opportunities are hard to come by. The turn 5 hairpin will give the best to passing opportunity, but expect some late lunges into lodge at the end of the lap. Now let's go take an onboard lap for a first person view of this gloriously old school circuit. So we start our lap on a very curved front straight. You want to keep it as left as you can so you can get the shortest run down to turn 1. Turn 1, very difficult, you want as much speed going through, but avoid running too wide to get the 1x. Coming into turn 2, you want to avoid that curve on the right, and just keep it as right as you can going into turn 3. As much speed as you can get through it, try and lay apex and avoid running too wide again to get the 1x. Into turn 4, you need to keep as wide of a line as possible. Try as much speed and tuck back in for turn 5. Use all of that clamber and keep it as tight as you can so you can straight line the exit as much as possible. Avoid running too wide as you can get sucked into the grass here. First chicane, you want to just send it as hard as you can, as much speed as possible, but avoid running too wide and getting caught in the grass. That will hamper your exit. The second chicane here, heavy braking, as much rotation into this first bend here. Keep it as tight as you can on the left. Avoid going too crazy. You need a lot of patience here. So you can straight line that exit just like that. Coming into turn 15, want to start as left as possible. Be very gentle in the car. Avoid washing right. Coming to turn 16, probably one of the most difficult places to overtake, but definitely a place you'll see it. Very hard on traction here as the track drops away from you as you finish your lap of Alton Park. So there you have a quick tour of Alton Park. Now it's time to give the stream back to Paul and Connery as we go racing for the fourth round of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain Championship. Well, thank you very much, Leo. Taking us for a lap there of this wonderful Alton Park here on iRacing. We've still got ourselves qualifying underway, and well, just shy of 12 minutes of that remaining to be exact. Of course, drivers, um, you know, we, we usually see a lot of these faster laps come towards the very end of the session, Paul. So uh, the standings that you see on the left hand side at the moment on the tower, not necessarily going to be the order that they uh, line up on the starting grid in because there's still a lot of uh, uh, things that these drivers can do to try and prepare themselves for that fast lap. But currently it is Jack Sedgwick on pole position with Thomas Cope in second place by two tenths of a second behind there. Then you've got Higgins there when you am drivers in P3. Uh, but uh, as we ride on board with the uh, driver number 29, this is the uh, Craig Williams number 29 as he heads his way on to another time lap.
Yeah, absolutely. That last uh, lap just becoming his best time doesn't improve place, though. But yeah, it's it's because it's a fixed setup series, is this. The drivers are having to burn off some fuel to get the car as light as possible to be able to have a really good push for the final five minutes or so of qualifying. So it, at this stage right now is, as you say, just all about preparing the car and getting it all set up and ready for them. Uh, for, to be able to push on and give it absolutely everything in those final five minutes. Josh Malin moving up into second place right now in qualifying, but we expect the, the quick times to start coming in um, soon because, well, the, these drivers are, are going to be starting ramping up the speed of these cars. Yep, they will, and, uh, well, Sebastian Job currently down in, uh, down further, much further down the order than we used to see in P17. That's because he hasn't really set a uh, representative lap time uh, just yet. So there's Eric Grove from the Pure Sims team. Number 20 heading his way across the line now. Does improve a 134.870. Good enough for third place on the starting grid so far, but still a very long way to go here in qualifying. Here's number 99 of Charles Rainford. Uh, They're currently sixth in the uh, pro order. Um, just continuing on with his lap here as well. Uh, an interesting stat that was pointed out by the one, the only Porsche in the Twitch chat is that, uh, well, no one's got themselves pole position just yet, apart from Sebastian Job. So Sebastian Job's taken all pole positions so far this season. How, what's the likelihood that we'll see anything different here, Paul? Because I remember Will Chadwick was actually pretty fast in practice. Well, this is his local track, don't forget. You know, Will Chadwick, he, uh, last time out, last year when we had this championship, he was actually quite rapid around here, if you remember. So he was uh, able to push on. So this could be an opportunity for Will to maybe uh, stake a claim at his first pole position. But Sebastian Job, I mean, he's just been so imperious in this car and so uh, he really is um somebody to to set your uh, set your clock to you know he's just been so metronomic in getting those pole positions that you can set your clock watch to him every week don't forget as well great to see charles rainford out there once again our guest driver um of course the uh in the porsche carrera cup great britain the current pro-am champion uh, in that series so uh, once again he, he really pr actually quite impressed mm. a few of us here last time out with Snetterton so hopefully things could go well for him again here today currently the trend's looking pretty good for him I gotta say though it feels a little bit weird seeing Will Chadwick in an Alta C sports car <laughs> and not in his uh, not, not in the uh, in the team Fordzilla machine of course, uh, change of teams very, very recently as uh, we ride on board with uh, Gareth Higgins, who we were just talking about. Currently top qualifier um, in the AM category, P7 in the overall standings here for the moment. So looking very, very good for Higgins in the final eight minutes of this qualifying session. Uh, has a car ahead of him, but, uh, well, the draft is not a massive effect here at, uh, at Alton Park. Yes, you have this uh, long back straight on the way down towards uh, the turn 10, turn 11, so you've got uh, Hislops and Nickerbrook, but uh, it's not really something that's going to make or break a lap. Yeah, it, it, it'll give you like a tenth or two. It won't give you anything more than that. As well, Chadwick goes to the top of our standings right now, 34-0, so those times are coming down now in uh, qualifying. I mean, in practice, the fastest time was in the, the 34.5, so it really tells you how the times have come down here in this portion of the uh, the session. So, you know, drivers have got their eye in now, and Chadwick has set a, a good benchmark. Are we going to see a time into the 33s? I mean, Sebastian Job, he has raced here in, in you know, in full metal racing, so he's got experience around this venue. And he actually said at that time that the... Uh, running in the sim really helped him get to the edge over his teammates. Yeah, that experience is absolutely invaluable. Running ball with Cedric, number 10, here for the moment for Inex. Um, I've noticed that a lot of the top runners are running times about half a second uh, faster than what they were able to do in practice, because Chadwick did a 134.576 in practice, a 134 flat here uh, in the qualifying session. Uh, so go along very, very well indeed. 
Cedric fourth place here for the moment. We've uh, seen him up the order on a few rounds uh, on a few occasions so far this season, but uh, after having a pretty diabolical start at Silverstone uh, for round number one of the season, scoring at nil point, he's, he's always been on the back foot. Yeah, it has been on the back foot. He, um, as he comes across the line there, half, uh, uh, half a se no, three tenths per second off of pole position then. Uh, Cedric did actually get quite a few personal bests and even a fastest sector out there on that lap. So here comes Sebastian Job. Now, is this going to be the start of him really pushing on now? He's, he's prepared his car, he's got himself going. Or is it a case of still just carrying on that preparation work? Yeah, carrying on. But uh, you're putting all of your all of your money on one lap here, though, when you do this, aren't you? Um, if you get off track on that particular lap, then you could probably say goodbye uh, to any decent chance at the pole position. So it's kind of one lap qualifying, but by proxy, I suppose. Yeah, uh, it's... Uh, it's He's really got to push on and really got to get his, his lap timing. But, yeah, Sebastian, I, I think that, as yeah, he's not really on it. I mean, I could see that through mm. uh, the exit of uh, Old Hall. At the start of the lap, you know, he wasn't anywhere near um, running the curb as hard as he can. I, I think, Sebastian, he will want a clean sweep. I think he'll be disappointed with what happened last time out at Snetterton in, in not being able to... Uh, to get the uh, positions and, and to not score any points as uh, well that's one way of getting out the way of uh, traffic so going down the grass but uh, yeah I think he will have been very disappointed and, and now he'll want to try and perfect the rest of the season as uh, more cars actually come on as pit road which surprises me with four minutes remaining because remember because of we're in the iRacing heat sessions uh, once your street reach zero on the clock, that is it. You cannot complete your lap. Yeah, important thing to note. These sessions don't work like normal open qualifying sessions when you don't have heat racing, where you are able to complete your lap. Once that time hits zero, like you said, Paul, that is going to be it. No chance to be able to complete the lap here. So here's Josh Whalen. So in the number 90 car. Continuing on, best lap 134.812 here for the moment. So still a lot of time left out there on the circuit uh, for Malin. P10 for the moment. Seven and a half tenths of a second behind the uh, current pole position setting time. No one able to get in the same post go to Chadwick here for the moment. But I get the feeling these final couple of minutes of qualifying are going to be absolutely pivotal to seeing where everyone starts here for race number one. It's been a clean sweep of pole positions. Oh, no. As Malin goes for a bit of a spin. As Paul, you mentioned that Josh is on the fast... Uh, excuse me, um, Seb's on the fast lap. Yeah, he is. He's pushing on, and he's been set in purple sectors so far on this lap. So Sebastian Job, I think we may well be uh, getting a pole position lap out of him as... Uh, Across the line goes Gareth Higgins once again. But yeah, Sebastian Job, he's been pushing on. Uh, he got that fuel load down and he is now getting the, the, a shift on here. Here's Leo Gary Borley, though, uh, one of your AM um, drivers. One second off of pole position coming across the line. Does improve his time. Uh, so Gary Borley improving his time. Will Chadwick out the final corner. What can he do here? But I think. It's going to be all eyes of Sebastian Job. As good as that lap is from Will Chadwick. Oh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> Let's see. Here goes Sebastian Job to the start finish line. It's a 133.695. It is enough. Just about by just shy of a tenth of a second. Puts Sebastian Job onto pole position with two minutes left to go here in this qualifying session. That is a lap and a half there from Job, despite Chadwick's best efforts there at the very end to lop a tenth of a second or so off of his time. Job just goes one better as we see James Parker head his way across the line. A 135.423 is a decent lap, but uh, not good enough to really launch him up the order. There's a lot of these drivers now. Well, this is going to be, well, the group behind this is going to be the last to that will be able to set themselves a time. Will Chadwick has carried on. 
he, he did cross the line with time to spare, but his lap isn't that good, although one sector has just gone purple oh. for Will Chadwick, so uh, don't write him out of this one here. Here comes Gareth Higgins across the line as well to finish his qualifying. He does improve, does Higgins, and that is a great lap time from him, 34-4, but uh, yeah, Chadwick is trying, but he's... It's hit and miss whether he sets any personal bests, or although he does have one purple sector. Might just be the, uh, the one purple sector that's enough, depending on how much time he's lopped off there. Here's Will Chadwick then, as he heads his way out no. of the final corner, coming no. up across the line. It's not going to happen. He dives it down on towards the pit lane. And uh, for the fourth time in a row here in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain, it'll be Sebastian Job on the pole position here for this round at uh, Alton Park. 30 seconds left on the clock. Let's see if there's any last ditch efforts well, from any of your drivers to try and improve. Well, one driver who impressed us last time out is there was Brendan Brakesley across the line. Luke Pennington, your top am, fourth place in qualifying. Absolutely sensational job from Luke. He was so unlucky last time out at Snetterton to not get an am win. He's going for gold here. Five, four, three, two, one. Leon Penn and Jamie Rush with just about improving positions right at the very dying moment of the qualifying session here. That is all done and dusted. Our grid is set for race number one here at Alton Park. This is going to be race seven of the championship. Sebastian Job on pole position by, well, 86 thousandths of a second back to Will Chadwick. That was a very interesting battle there at the very front of the field. Then you got Matthew Emery there in P3 with Luke Pennington, our fastest AM driver, starts second row on the starting grid. So fantastic effort from the number 74. Then you've got Jamie Moon there in fifth with Jack Cedric lining up in sixth place. Kane Halliburton will line up in seventh with Leon Penn in eighth. Gareth Higgins will start in ninth with Jamie Rushworth in P10. Scott Mokes in P11 with Thomas Cope in P12. Makes it an all Olympus Esports row number six. They've got uh, Charles Rainford in P13 with Ollie Peacock P14. Joshua Malin in P15 with Eric Grove in P16. Then you've got Brandon Blakesley there down in P17 with Craig Williams in P18. Further down the order, you have Leo Garibaldi starting from P19. So a lot of work to do for your AM Championship leader to be able to get some a good points finish out of this first race. Then you've got Lewis Ward in P20, James Parker P21, Adam State P22. Then you've got Urbanchik and Thompson rounding out 23rd and 24th on the starting grid here today. And uh, well, Thompson, of course, uh, not setting a time in that qualifying session. So, we've got uh, about a minute and a half before we get ourselves underway and towards, uh, down towards turn number one here, uh, Paul. This is a great opportunity to have a massive dogfight right at the front of the field because Job is on pace as ever. And like he said, this is Will Chadwick's home track and he narrowly missed out on pole position there in that qualifying session. So, this is probably going to be one of the closer races of this season between your front runners. It could well be, and um, you know we've seen in previous rounds of the championship, the opening opening race of the day has been very much Sebastian Job at the front, just controlling things and then pulling away after looking after his tyres. Uh, this time, though, I think Will Chadwick will be pushing on a bit more, and I think he'll want that that, uh, that win here today to try and get one over Sebastian. So I think we might see a little bit of a more feisty Will Chadwick in this particular race in the Altus Esports car. And don't forget, everybody's using the same setup out there. Yeah, fixed setup. Not exactly the same circumstances at the start though, because of this undulating pit lane in front of the field, pointed up slightly, middle to rear of the field pointed down, and then you start pointing up again, further up the hill, once you, once you get towards the very back of the starting grid. So it's gonna be a very challenging standing start uh, for all of these drivers here might shake things up on the way down in towards turn number one for the first time. But we're all ready to get this race meeting underway at Alton Park for the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup. Great Britain, those engine notes rise once again. 
And we're off for the way. A great start for Sebastian Joe from pole position. Chadwick's gotten some good traction as well. It's going to be a fight for P3 behind them between Matt Emery and Luke Pennington. Pennington now has to be looking down his inside because he's got Sedgwick slinging a move down in there as they start to, to uh, get ourselves in towards turn two. In towards tennis. Oh, there's going to be a big wreck in the very back of the field as the rest of the field head their way through Cascades for the first time. Yeah, that was a huge one for Urban Chick then. Uh, into the wall on the exit of Old Hall Corner. Carl oh. McGrath and contact. We've got more ended up into the wall there. That's the 17 of Leon Penn and Josh Merlin involved in all of that as well. Yeah, Merlin having a very, very big instant indeed, getting two tyres onto the grass, and that can spell very, very big trouble in these cars. Chaotic start here to this first 25 minute race here at Alton Park. We got side by side down the uh, down the straight in towards Nickelbrook. That's Cedric and Pennington having a little bit of a fight through the chicane there. It's so tricky to try and get yourself too wide through there. There's not a lot of space to work with at all. And uh, well, Cedric able to come out uh, uh, just between Pennington and uh, Moon in that instance. But Moon is being a little bit concerned about Halliburton in behind as well. So a lot of jostling for position, a lot of looks here and there on this first lap as the front grouping tries to break away from the rest of them. I think if you're Matt Emery, you must be laughing your head off right now at the gap that has gone between him and Luke, uh, and Leon, uh, Luke Pennington. You know, Luke is, is well entitled to fight for position. You know, he, he qualified in fourth place. He's got the pace here. Yes, Jack Cedric has been uh, like a terrier behind him. My goodness, what a great start for uh, Luke. He is uh, leading Am and fourth place overall. Sensational stuff. Yeah, it's been absolutely incredible for Pennington. Has a bit of a buffer of pro drivers back to the next place. Am driver of Higgins down in P8. That's all good to see as far as he's concerned. This is what happened at the very back of the field, and it is the very back. Oh, just a car getting out wide onto the grass, coming back onto circuit and sending uh, another Porsche into the wall there. There was uh, uh, Josh Thompson involved in that one, of course. Leon Penn towards the back of the order as well, Urban Schick too. So uh, we've had that one retirement, uh, rather two retirements already. Josh Thompson from that initial incident, and of course uh, we had Josh Malin as well go out early on with that big, big wreck coming out of Cascades. Thompson didn't even take the start of the race, so something Ooh. must have happened to, uh, to his kit for him to be like that. Lewis Ward as well, we've lost him in this race on this lap, so something's happened to Lewis out there, but uh, he is out of the race. But look, the body language of Coach Adam, here we go, here's a replay of what happened as well. Oh my, well, that's a huge, huge incident, and Merlin, as soon as he gets on the grass there, there's nothing he can do. Three wide. It's a narrow circuit here at, uh, at Alton Park, and you're just asking for trouble if you go three wide there into Ireland. You see how desperate these drivers are for positions on board. Phew! Oh, that team PGZ car has just narrowly avoided everything that was happening ahead there. The seas parted and allowed him through. Meanwhile, there was more in towards his lops as well, wasn't there? There's Craig uh, Williams, I believe, uh, having to take the shortcut, take the slowdown. We're on a first lap, that's pretty significant. It is brutal, is that slowdown. As, uh, there's, uh, there's what happened to look. Oh, that's... Do you know what? You feel so silly when that instant happens because it's a cambered corner. As soon as you get up onto that grass, first of all, the grass is slippy anyway, and it's going to always send you out wide, but that grass is level. So you're not getting the advantage of the camber as well, and before you know it, you're into the uh, into the wall, and bye-bye, uh, that's the end of, your, uh, end of your race right there. But these two at the front, as I said, Chadwick, his body language of his car... Oh, oh no! That's Garibaldi! That's your uh, AM Championship leader! That is huge. That is huge in terms of AM Championship. Higgins was only six points behind coming into this uh, in the AM standings and after a poor race one, shortly for Garibaldi, that snap gap is going to narrow. If not, Higgins going to be overtaking into heading in towards uh, race number two here. And remember, these race one incidents, you know, they're not isolated to just race one because if you finish far down the order here in race one, you're going to start far down the order in race two as well. So Garibaldi definitely up against it now 
here at Olsen Park. Here's the massive train, the massive battle for fourth place, currently headed up by an AM driver, Luke Pennington, uh, who's had a fantastic effort here today, fourth in the AM standings, but with this sort of performance, uh, he'll be climbing quickly up the order. He certainly will. J uh, Jack Cedric lost a number of places then uh, through Nick Brook, and in fact, uh, as Pennington's going to lose the place, he's going to lose another place as well. Moon has made it past. That's what happened to Gary Burley. But crucially, Jamie Moon has been able to get ahead of Luke Pennington. He's been able to do something that Jack Cedric hasn't been able to do. Yeah, it stacked everyone else up behind this as well as they went uh, side by side briefly. So everyone still even more knows the tale uh, than they originally were as uh, we ride on the boards here with the driver of uh, Kane Halliburton as he locks onto the back of uh, Luke Pennington ahead. So uh, Pennington, of course, you know, he's, he, his main rival is Gareth Higgins down there in P8. However, Higgins is not too far uh, down this train. So if he gets completely freight trained down the inside, he might be under threat of losing the AM race lead to Higgins if he's just caught off line constantly. Uh, and that's it around here. If you absolutely right there Connery. as soon as you get offline and you've got a queue of cars behind you you just get absolutely freight trained and there is a queue of cars behind him because luke is in fifth place and fifth down to uh tenth it's only covered by uh, a couple of seconds so you know those cars you know, they're all together out there on track as 11th is a, a good race raging on there and still holding on to position is Jamie Rushworth, but Ollie Peacock is trying his best to get past him. On board with Blakesley here, as uh, he was uh, having a little bit of a look every which way on Scott Mokes as that entire group uh, sort of concertinaed up through seconds of one, but no opportunities for Mokes to head his way through just yet. And in fact, he is being pressured from behind uh, by Brandon Blakesley as well as Blakesley locks up into the shallow hairpin and takes an off-track excursion. That's not fantastic for uh, Brandon Blakesley there and loses a whole ton of spots in the process. Meanwhile, further up the field, Pennington still having to put on the defense. Halliburton has found his way towards the inside through his lops, gets himself the, uh, the breaks in into the first apex, gets the pass done. There was a little bit of contact between Pennington and Cedric there as well, but Pennington remains ahead for now. It seems like Pennington's a little bit of a bottleneck for these guys. Well, Pennington right now is in that reverse grid pole position slot in sixth place. Sedgwick wants it. He wants that position. He did win the uh, the second race last time out at Snetterton, so he wants another opportunity of getting a race win here in this championship, does uh, Jack, as behind a change of position as well. Thomas Cup making his way past, and Rainford is saying thank you very much. I'll take advantage of that as well. And again, that shows. Go offline, and before you know it, you've lost two places. It requires two things, though. It requires the drive to go offline, and you being in a position to try and capitalize on it. Only one of those that you have really any control over. So... It's, it's great that the opportunistic driving is there for Rainford to try and be able to make up that position. Currently in P10 here is Gareth Higgins. P2 in the AM class is still won't be too shabby of a finish. But considering how Pennington's having to fight tooth and nail for every single position here, uh, Higgins might be thinking of the chance of uh, getting an AM class win here. Well, Pennington has lost that reverse grid pole position slot to Jack Sedgwick. So Sedgwick has made his way past are going to uh, Britons, the, uh, the left, right, left chicane, up over hilltop then, plunge downhill in towards Hislops, and then uh, the right-hander at Nickerbrook takes you back to Clay Hill, and uh, I, I strongly recommend that if anybody wonders where the name Nickerbrook came from, have a look online, it's an intriguing story nonetheless, <laughs> uh, if what, a little cheeky, but, uh, but meanwhile at the front, those two, six tenths of a second, Sebastian's not pulling away like we would expect him to. Yeah, and that's, that makes this lead battle intriguing because is this just the natural pace difference between the two or is uh, Chadwick keeping something in the tank to be able to go on the hard charge in the last couple of laps of this race? It's something that we've seen Sebastian Job himself do time and time again. Is this Chadwick giving Job some of his own medicine, perhaps? <laughs> maybe so. Uh, maybe so indeed, you know. Will 
I think for Will, he can focus a lot of his effort and time on this championship, whereas Sebastian, he's got a few things to, to juggle, hasn't he, in the world of sim racing, Not none the least, the uh, Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup, of course, so this series, you've really got to balance it with all your other commitments as, uh, as a as well as the uh, being the Oracle Red Bull Racing Esport, uh, Red Bull Racing uh, <laughs> Simulator driver as well. He's got a lot on his plate, as Sebastian. Uh, it does, and uh, a human's attention can be only divided by so much. It's still very, very impressive that he's able to do everything that he does at, at such a high level as well. It's absolutely incredible. Oh, bit of a replay there. That's the number 39 car, so that is uh, going to be uh, Urbanjik having a uh, bit of a problem there. All on his own, and, well, the grass punishes one more driver. It certainly does, and, uh, yeah, Merlin second the tour back to the pit lane, so that's going to be his race done here in this one. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, not been a good day for Urbanjik here in the opening, but, you know, never say never. You can always get yourself a, a good result in the second race, nonetheless. As Matt Emery, what a what a mm. boring, dull day he's having <laughs> all on his own there in third place. Third place in the race, third place in the championship, and in no man's land at the moment. So you know he's, he's two seconds behind uh, Chadwick. He's four seconds ahead of Moon. So it's a relaxing, literally Sunday drive for uh, for Matt Emery here for the moment. Let's hope that continues on, at least in terms of race two, because sometimes you can be a bit caught out by a calm race one, and then all of a sudden everything happens in race two. So we'll have to see what happens there. There's uh, Battle for P7 once again. Pennington is doing a very, very good job to hold on to these positions, by the way. It's, it was a mega qualifying effort for him, and his defensive driving has been pretty satisfactory so far, of course. You know, there have been a couple of drivers that have been able to work their way through on him, but he's kept the, the um, he's kept a couple of strong drivers behind for a good couple of laps. I think this is where the reason why he is an AM driver is coming through, though. Not quite got the, the level of consistency, only just, you know, by small margins, that the other drivers do have out there. And I think that's what's maybe seeing him. Yes, he's got that outright pace on a one lap and can really put on a good show but uh, it's, you've got to be consistent with it lap after lap after lap in a series like this where you're all in the same car you're all running the same setup it's all about that consistency and uh, it's just not quite had that but still leading the am you can't really ask for more when you're in his position can't complain about the performance so far that's for sure Thomas Cope and Charles Ranger, Rainsford, uh, Rain at Ford, excuse me, <laughs> have to try and find uh, find a way through here at the moment. And with less than 12 minutes to go, it's not necessarily going to be the easiest thing to do, especially, like I said, with the defensive efforts that Pennington has put up so far. We're on board with that number 99 car uh, here at the moment. He's only uh, participated in one round uh, of the uh, uh, of the season so far. But actually, this is his first uh, round of the season so far. Excuse me, I was. No, uh, I was. He, he's. A, he was the guest driver last time out uh, at Snetterton, and he's here again. But uh, of course, ah. he doesn't count towards the championship, does Charles? So that's why uh, he's not on the on the scoring. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, and I was also confused between seeing Redford and Rainford, two very very similar names. Um, there on on the uh, on the entry list there. So I do apologise for that one. But uh, yeah, continuing to go on. Uh, very well here is uh, is Rainford locked up behind uh, Thomas Cope but uh, this could be one of those flashpoints in the race you know especially if they're you know they're not currently really getting caught up behind Pennington but this is uh, one of the closest battles out there on circuit and so what's happened towards the back here car off the circuit cars all closing up now Craig Williams is involved in this one Leon Penn and James Parker yep. Uh, currently in this trio and Parker holding them behind here for the moment as well. Penn of course on a bit of a recovery drive after starting in P8 uh, in this race so far. There's uh, the race leaders we're just checking in on them just... It was a well, slow lap from Joe. Yeah. Three tenths slower last lap so uh, Chadwick has been able to catch up a little bit of time here in the Alta Seasports car. It was uh, Brandon Blakesley by the way. Here you see in the replay then through his slops into Nicker Brook and he's going to turn in 
and just the back end doesn't cooperate with him and ends up in the gravel and grass. Sometimes that, that does just happen as, uh, you know, a lot of weight over the rear of these cars. And was there a little bit of contact there as well? I, I, if anything, it was net curd. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that is, uh, unfortunately, that's the nature of uh, racing on the internet, is that unfortunately uh, things like that can happen. But Blakely does stay out there on track. But uh, Job's got the bit between his teeth again, has pulled out a, a tenth or so. Um, throughout this lap so I think it was just a momentary issue for Sebastian out there again goes further to prove he's he's not a machine even though a lot of evidence points towards that at times drivers can make mistakes it's just about capitalizing on those mistakes when they happen and Chadwick has kept a very very consistent pace uh, so far uh, in this event as Definitely not been allowing Sebastian Job to run away at the front of the field as he has done so uh, so many times throughout this season and even in even in uh, other series and other races as well. This is the we usually see the Sebastian Job spe special with him waltzing away at the front, but not so here in this one. So Chadwick keeping him honest, but is there really much he can do with eight and a half minutes left to go unless he's been able to save a little bit of tire performance in the bag? Because we know that that's what Job is good at as well. Yeah, and uh, Job, he, he, he knows how to play the percentages. He knows how to uh, to manage a race up at the front here in this series. And uh, he's been doing it every round, uh, every week that we uh, bring you this series in that opening race of the day. And in fact, one, is, uh, one of his sectors here in this uh, lap is a, is a purple sector. So he's, uh, he is pushing on the Sebastian in all of this um car 12 kane halliburton's now coming under pressure from jack sedgwick behind it, it, these two they want championship points but also sixth place which is where jack sedgwick is right now is that inversion pole position and there's no one close behind them to really get stuck in with regards to that so it might just have to be a little bit of a fight amongst themselves here it's you know would you w i mean you start in the same row as the starting grid, right? You start front row, no matter where you start, P5, P6. But would you rather get P5 for the points or P6 for the actual pole position? Uh, for the points, I would go P5. I, I would go for that over... Because uh, Jack is fourth place in the championship coming into this week. Matt Emery's scoring more in this opening race. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's um, definitely um, a case of... Um, Jack wanting those points in the championship to try and minimise the gap that Matt Emery is going to pull away from him in this particular race. That does seem to be the case. Of course, uh, Halliburton not racing with the same team as we've, uh, we've been used to seeing him in the series so far. That's why he has a blank livery. No longer with ATRS Esports. So a uh, bit of a privateer here at the moment, unless he's announced anything different. Now, here's an interesting point that I'm going to draw your attention to. Josh Merlin has actually gone back out on track. Um, mm. He's obviously fixed his car. There's no free fast repair like you get in, in some leagues here in uh, iRacing. But obviously feeling that, well, I'll get a feel of um, the track again. But also, if he can do more laps than Urban Check did, that'll get him one more place on the grid. Yeah, I mean, it's worth it, <laughs> you know, just uh, one place. It's great to see Milan back out there, like you said. You know, it, it's not sort of uh, just going off in a strop and then coming back uh, during the last minutes of warm-up in between the two races. He's actually paying attention to the race still and getting oh, no, back I've out there because he sees I've that one I've done that position. in the past there, <laughs> Huh? I've done that in the past and gone, oh, I've crashed on lap one, right, I'm off. I'll come back for race two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, you're more willing to come back when it's like an endurance race or something like that, when you know there's a long time yeah. to go, like a 24-hour race. But w when it's sprint racing like this, sometimes y you can be caught in that moment of just, oh, I'll, I'll just, I'll just join the next race. It's fine, not realizing that there are actually positions to gain on the starting grid for the next race. Yeah, it's, it's, <sighs> yeah. I, I mean, I have actually gained grid spots that way before. Um, uh, 
in the sprint races like this and have been able to, to move up the grid to be able to do that. So uh, definitely it is worth going back out there and to carry on doing that. But um, Job, uh, he's, he's had it tough. I mean, yeah, the gap has been relatively consistent. I mean, this might be the first time that it reaches one second, the gap here. But Sebastian has been kept honest here. Yep, he has. Gap just over a second now, just edging over. So Job deploying his characteristic late race pace is what's happened to Luke Pennington. Lets a train of cars through, falls outside of the top 10, and it's a change of AM leader as well as Gareth Higgins in ninth place overall now has that title. We didn't quite see what happened. I saw a couple of changes on the left-hand side while we were looking at the race leaders, but wasn't even sure exactly what a set of circumstances actually happened there in and amongst the bottom end of the top 10. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get a look at that in uh, just a few moments' time. But yeah, definitely not good for Pennington. He's been looking so good. And, and, and this happened last time out at Snetterton. He made a mistake. Oh, oh, he's made a mistake. He's missed his braking and decided, right, I'm just going to go straight on. Cut the chicane, serve the time, the slowdown time penalty. Oh, not the best place to be coming back on right in front of Rainford. And then he gets himself back up to speed, but unfortunately for him, drops him four places. Yeah, and, and loses him the arm lead. That's, that's the more important point here. Gareth Higgins now ahead of Ollie Peacock and, and a second or so ahead of Pennington as well. It's just a simple mistake to make. I bet we've all made it down into there, you know. it's uh, You just miss your breaking point. All of a sudden, you don't have any option but to um, take the shortcut through. And that's, I guess, the difference between pro and am drivers here in this series. Oh, Sedgwick with a big slide through the exit of the corner. Kane Halliburton in fifth. Shaq Sedgwick in sixth. Battling it out in these final minutes of this race one for, well, reverse grid P1 and P2, I suppose. Yeah, so <laughs> Halliburton holds on to that um, that position then, but um, Sedgwick, he won't give this one up without a fight. I can assure you of that. I've commentated on him. Oh, it feels like forever that I've commentated on Jack. He's been in around the top level of sim racing for so long, and uh, uh, I may, I'm... I'm making him sound an old man, but he's not. He's still a still a young man, but still he, he is able to uh, to push on and don't count him out of a, an another attempt. But it's so difficult to overtake at this track. Uh, you can make moves and you can make them stick, but it is a difficult place to overtake. But look at that job now, second and a half ahead. Um, he's now just asserting his dominance. He absolutely is. Again, like I said, this is the late race pace that is deployed uh, by Sebastian Job. Uh, we've seen it so many times as well. I, I was holding out hope a little bit that we'd see a little bit of a closer competition here towards the end of race one, but Job is so, so good at race management. He does a fantastic job. I, I, and, and again, he's a He's another one who's got plenty of experience, but uh, he really does um, uh, do a, a great job. I mean, it's. Um, it, it, I mean, Sebastian, he, he's, he's been racing for a long time in the same. I mean, I raced against him in a touring car series back in 2015, you know, uh, when he was just a kid. So. Um, uh, yeah, definitely uh, he does know what he's doing in managing a race, managing things at the front. I mean, my goodness, he was the, the season champion back in 2020. Uh, no, sorry, 2021, should I say, for the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain. And he was also the 2020 Porsche Tycar Esports Super Cup champion. So he knows what it takes to, to win a series. He absolutely does. And just look at the gap he has now. 1.8. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible performance and, you know, it's going to take this race win in, in quite a dominant fashion as long as he can keep on the great stuff here towards the end. 30 seconds left on the clock means that this is the final lap here. A little bit of an overcommitment there for the exit of the chicane, but it's, it's not really going to matter all that much. And I'm not really one to criticize, let's be fair, on the way down in towards uh, his lops and then through Neckerbrook. Not all that much that William Chadwick can do at this point from 1.8 back. 
Sebastian Drove just cruising in that Oracle Red Bull Racing eSports car all the way to the end of this race number one. In terms of battles further down the order, you might have one between Higgins and Peacock, potentially. That looks relatively close down the timing tower. But race one, I mean, Job has run pretty close through the first two-thirds of this race. But he turns the afterburners on, as he always does, in the final moments, and comes across the line to take the race win here in race one at Tolton Park in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup, Great Britain. Chadwick in second place, two seconds behind, is going to be the uh, the final classification. Matt Emery getting himself on the podium as well here for race one. In terms of reverse grid pole position, that goes to Jack Sedgwick there, down in P6. Halliburton able to keep him at bay, at least in terms of those championship points. And in terms of the AM class, well, it's Gareth Higgins that takes the win there after late race problems for Luke Pennington. Just the solo car incident down in towards his lops, having to take the escape route and, well, dropping outside of the top 10. But what a very intriguing race, Paul. It certainly was a, uh, an intriguing race. So plenty of uh, action in the early going, and then it all just seemed to calm down a little bit. And uh, I I've got to feel for Luke Pennington after having a, a one heck of a qualifying in fourth place to just drop down the order to start with just getting freight trained a little bit competing really well with those pro drivers of moon halliburton and sedgwick and then just one little mistake and uh, he ends up having to cut across the chicane and uh, that drops him down to 11th yep, it really does here's the classification of course pending post-race uh, well influences from the stewards uh, with regards to the penalties but one thing we know is not going to change is Sebastian Joe's race win by two seconds over Will Chadwick then you've got Matt Emery there in P3 Jimmy Moon P4 with Ken Halliburton P5 then you've got Jack Cedric in P6 Thomas Cope P7 Charles Rainford in P8 and Gareth Higgins is your I'm class winner in P9 Ollie Peacock rounds out the top 10 overall and further down you got Luke Pennington with a very strong performance today, but unfortunately that late race incident going straight on at his lops really puts a damper on it. Down in P11 now, we have Jamie Rush with him, P12. Scott Mokes, P13, Amber State, P14. Eric Grove, Leon Penn, Craig Williams, Garrett Bolly, Blake Sleep, Parker rounds out the top 20. And you've got Urban Zick, the drivers that had problems mostly down here. So Urban Zick, Malin, Ward and Thompson not even taking the start there for Team Redline. So after a pretty intriguing race number one, we'll get ourselves set for race two. But uh, before we do that, let's have a little bit of a recap of how to actually work our way around here at Alton Park with Leo Garibaldi. Hi there, my name is Leo Garaboli, drive for the Team PGZ Porsche 992 GT3 Cup car and welcome to round 4 of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain Championship at Alton Park. Alton is the quintessential British circuit, having been a happy home for just about all forms of motor racing for almost 70 years. The old school fast flowing corners are amazing to drive, but passing opportunities are hard to come by. The turn 5 hairpin will give the best passing opportunity, but expect some late lunges into lodge at the end of the lap. Now let's go take an onboard lap for a first person view of this gloriously old school circuit. So we start our lap on a very curved front straight. You want to keep it as left as you can so you can get the shortest run down to turn 1. Turn 1, very difficult, you want as much speed going through, but avoid running too wide to get the 1x. Coming into turn 2, you want to avoid that curve on the right, and just keep it as right as you can going into turn 3. As much speed as you can get through it, try and lay apex and avoid running too wide again to get the 1x. Into turn 4, you need to keep as wide of a line as possible. Try as much speed and tuck back in for turn 5. Use all of that clamber and keep it as tight as you can so you can straight line the exit as much as possible. Avoid running too wide as you can get sucked into the grass here. First chicane, you want to just send it as hard as you can. 
as much speed as possible, but avoid running too wide and getting caught on the grass, that will hamper your exit. The second chicane here, heavy braking, as much rotation into this first bend here. Keep it as tight as you can on the left, avoid going too crazy, you need a lot of patience here. So you can straight line that exit just like that. Coming into turn 15, want to start as left as possible, be very gentle on the car, avoid washing your eye. Coming into turn 16, probably one of the most difficult places to overtake, but definitely a place you'll see it. Very hard on traction here as the track drops away from you as you finish your lap of Alton Park. So there you have a quick tour of Alton Park. Now it's time to give the stream back to Paul and Connery as we go racing for the fourth round of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain Championship. So then, welcome back to the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain, rounds number seven and eight of the championship. And I'm delighted to say that joining me in the commentary box here, and hopefully um, we have him, Will Chadwick, who finished that race in second place, having a battle with Sebastian Job. Will, just talk us through, how did that go from your perspective? Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was alright. I was really happy with the start of Stimpace, but as a common theme I'm finding with this fixed setup is no matter how much I protect the tyres, I always feel like at the end Sebastian just destroys me. It feels like his tyres get better and my tyres just go off the cliff and, and we end up having that big gap at the end, but pace was good. Um, again, beaten by not much in qualifying, but um, it just shows how good Sebastian is because I think he only, he only had one attempt at it. Uh, but yeah, I mean... Uh, Happy with the P2. Um, reverse grid's going to be interesting with how many good drivers are like on the pole. Sedwick again on the pole, and we've got I think Moons up there, and also uh, Halliburton. So I think it's going to be really interesting in the second race. But a bit of a shame I still can't still can't get a win. And, and it, I mean, especially when it's a track that you know so well, isn't it? It's your yeah. local track. You know how uh, how difficult is it to make any overtakes around here? Because it is a narrow circuit around here. I would like to say almost impossible, but I'm hoping to prove that wrong in the next race. <laughs> um, it is notoriously, you ask any racing driver that's, that's drove here in, in, the, in the real world, it's a very, very hard track to overtake. You don't get many opportunities because every corner that's a, a large braking zone has a fast corner before it. So your only real clear cut chance is hoping that you get a good run through the chicane and then you're able to, uh, the first chicane that is, and then you're able to to get him into into his lots. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll see what we can do. Probably really important to take advantage of people struggling on the cold tires at the start because that's when people are going to make the most mistakes, and and try and be as aggressive as possible without having any any form of contact uh, on that opening lap to maybe pick one or two places if I don't mess up the start, which I like to do in the second race. What, you'd like to mess up the start? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, that's, that seems what happens every time. I'm like, first race, you know, we get a decent start, good enough, you know, with the staggered grids. And then reverse grid, I always tend to just let Sebastian by. Bye-bye, Sebastian. <laughs> well, but, yeah. well, we'll let you get off and get yourself prepared. But, you know, all the best for uh, race number two. And hopefully we get to speak to you again after that one. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, Connery, there we go. Will Chadwick joining us uh, for a little bit of a chat after race one, and uh, certainly he'll be hoping for a, a, a much better time than the last time here um, in in this series of uh, being able to compete with Sebastian Job. I mean, he has the benefit of starting ahead of him this time around, so I guess if he, if he gets ahead, we might be talking about a little bit of a, a different race here. Uh, in race two compared to what we saw in race number one where it, it would have to be Sebastian Job going on the offense which we know he can we can that he can do like let's that, not kill ourselves he, like he's he's one of the best when it comes to you know Porsche racing here here on i racing no matter if it's in the cup car in the GT3 no matter what he's he's, he's one of the best so it, it's going to be an intriguing race uh, for that reason and of course they have that ever-present battle that we have here in race two of trying to get through on those drivers that benefited from the reverse grid and that is a separate skill in and of itself as well so yeah intriguing stuff to come let's just say that we're a couple of minutes away from getting our gridding procedure underway for race two 
And of course, the point structure is slightly different here for a race two. You know, slightly less points, in fact, uh, for a race win. And like you mentioned, Paul, it was a slightly less points as well uh, for the uh, the P5. Uh, excuse me, not the P5, but uh, the um, yeah, but the the points further down the order as well, which makes things just a little interesting. Yeah, it just uh, spices things up a little bit and gives people. Uh, reason to uh, to try and do well in that race one as well and uh, well I mean uh, pole position gets yourself two bonus points as well so that really helps some of those uh, drivers out but yeah definitely uh, one that uh, has done um, uh, done wonders for a few of those drivers but you've got to feel heartbroken for uh, Luke Pennington out there yeah, you, you do, and uh, I mean, you gotta get that. You gotta get past that now at, at this point, because what happened in race one, that was it. You know, it, it recognized the mistake. You know, just out breaking himself into into his lobs, perhaps under a little bit of pressure, because not necessarily expecting to run that high in the order, um, and then just sort of bottling a top ten. But you know, it's a new race, and uh, you know, you can only press on forwards from that point. So I'll be very interested to see and to track his progress. Uh, over this race number two to see if he can actually find a little bit more consistency in terms of the race pace and, and fight in and amongst those uh, pro drivers that typically reside inside of the top ten. And uh, he has to do something about Higgins at least. Yeah, he does. I mean, Higgins, that's another win for him in the arms. That'll really help secure his uh, arm position in the, uh, the championship. But, uh, you know, th this series, we're not even... Well, we're just getting to the halfway point of this championship, so uh, really, the drivers now, if, they, if they've had a good start to the season, they want to consolidate that. But those that haven't had a good start to the season, they need to really push on. Here a couple of our drivers. You can see, of course, well, not right now, but you can see Garibaldi there in the, uh, in, in the top left with a, a couple of our other participants as well. You can see Will Chadwick there down at the very, very bottom. And so it's great to see the, the, the insight that we have into the, uh, into the driver's homes, into the driver's sim rigs. And uh, it's definitely been one of the, the innovations that I've really enjoyed uh, that's come along in sim racing very, very recently. But uh, here's the starting grid then for race two. It's Jack Cedric on pole position for NX Racing. Then you've got Kane Halibut, the privateer now in P2 with uh, Jamie Moon in P3, Matt Emery in P4. And then that's our front runners from race one. Will Chadwick and Sebastian Job run, uh, starting in P5 and P6. Everyone else lines up exactly as they finished in race one. So Thomas Cope in P7 with Charles Rainford in P8. Gareth Higgins will start in ninth with Ollie Peacock in 10th. Luke Pennington, let's see what he can do from P11 with Jamie Rushworth in P12. Scott Burks in P13, Adam State in P14. Uh, Eric Grove and Leon Penn will reside uh, on the 8th row of the starting grid. Then you've got Craig Williams and Leo Garibaldi on row 9 there. Finishing off the top 20 starters, it's Brandon Blakesley and James Parker. Then you've got Jacob Urbanjik and Joshua Malin. And then you've got Lewis Ward and Josh Thompson running out the last row of the starting grid. It'd be very interesting to see if Thompson even takes a start here. I'm not, I'm actually, I'm seeing him connected to the server. So you might indeed actually take the start, but we will just have to uh, wait and see with regards to that. And actually we're just getting words that Thompson's not actually racing. He is in the server, he is connected, but not going to take the start. At least that's the word that we have here. So drivers getting themselves ready then for race number two, our reverse grid event here in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup, Great Britain. It was Sebastian Job once again taking another emphatic race, we, uh, race win. He's won every single race one so far this season, but he hasn't actually won a race two uh, so far. So that's going to be an interesting predicament. Let's see if he's able to get the clean sweep here today or if we'll see another different winner of a race two. Uh, unless you're reading different results to me, yeah, Sebastian Job oh, has won me, yes. race twos. He only <laughs> missed out on winning race uh, race two last time out because of the incident that him and Will Chadwick had. Um, but yeah, so he'll be hoping for enough <laughs> clean sweep. Uh, I, I I understand the co confusion because of the points uh, difference yes. for race two compared to race one. I could tell you, by the way, I've stood at the back of the grid in a uh, touring car grid uh, at the bottom of Dealey. That is a steep hill, so if you're starting right at the back of the grid, it is just a challenge to get the car off the start. Yep, it is. I mean, we touched on it in race one. We've, uh, I mean, the, the, the grid size here is not 
absolutely massive, so we, we don't see cars basically starting on a, what feels like a 25% incline. Melee and Urban Check Parker at the very back might be getting a little bit of lats, but uh, yeah, if we have any grid size bigger than 24 here, um, that does tend to cause a little bit of a problem. There we go. You can just see right at the very back of the grids how the, the gradient uh, is and how what the drivers have to deal with back there. But we've got race two here, just about to get itself started. It's Jack Cedric on pole position with Kane Halliburton on the front row as well. We're off racing once again here at Alton Park. Down towards turn number one, Halliburton sliding in towards P2 there, keeping Jamie Moon behind. Meanwhile, Chadwick around the outside. The Sebastian Job are trying to fend around the outside of Sebastian Job. He can't afford to let Job get the position on him early here. And on cold tyres around the outside, Job's going to wash out. And here comes Charles Rainford getting towards driver's left-hand side now. Thomas Cope will push him on the way down towards the shell hole hairpin here just after this left-hand kick as Job gets forced wide out into the grass and contacts the barrier on driver's right-hand side. Slides all the way to the very back of the order and it's a repeat to the last race meeting for Sebastian Job. And, and this is where sometimes you have to admit defeat going through Island Bend on lap one on cold tyres and just back out of a too wide situation. So this is going to give Will Chadwick a great opportunity to try and score himself more points than Sebastian who drops down to 20th in this race but Sebastian was just it all started at Cascades he went out wide through Cascades and then it stopped to run as we had instance further back as well and I believe Josh Merlin has got involved in all this Leo Gariboli spins around and Merlin coming through gets tagged as well yeah so I didn't quite see that at the very back of the field as we were focused on what was going on at the very front of the field so it's a second race in a row where we've had a little bit of chaos towards the rear end of the field. But later on, just a few corners later, we had this. Sebastian Job. I mean, I'm not sure what you really expect Charles Rainford to do in that situation. Job's not alongside by any significant margin whatsoever. And there's only one way that car on the inside is going to go through such a high-speed section. Especially on cold tyres as well. Uh, I mean, Rainford did try and give him space as well, to be fair to Charles. And you're absolutely right there, Connery very little that he could do with that. Sebastian has carried on in this race, so obviously the damage that he does have isn't causing him too much harm, and he will try and just gain back any time that he possibly can, but Jack Sedgwick, once again, last week, started at the front and got out front and uh, won the race last week. Is he going to do that again? But Kane Halliburton behind is keeping him honest, but uh, Will Chadwick I'm sure somebody will have told him in his ear, hey, Sebastian's yeah. had issues. We need points. Yeah. Um, oh, so it's, oh, you can see the frustration, actually. Just a shake of the head there. Not exactly getting the line through uh, his lots of Nickerbrook right. So even though his main contender is all the way down towards the bottom of the order, still feeling the pressure there in, the, in that fifth place feeling the need to maximise the points delta back to Job, given Job's situation. Luke Pennington just is falling back even more now in the uh, in, in terms of the AM drivers. He's just not had a good day in the office. Had a brilliant qualifying, but then when it's come to the race pace, it's just not had that pace there. Oh, a little bit of rubbing going into the right-hander there from Scott Marks and Leon Penn, but Pennington, yeah, he's just been falling backwards in in these races he just doesn't seem to have that race pace here today yeah i think you're absolutely right race pace a little lacking you can forgive it given given that he's an am driver sometimes you do just have those special laps those wonderful laps and this is a wonderful battle between eric grove and scott bokes here at the moment as there's a big off big impact for Eric Grove into the tyre barriers on the exit of the hairpin. He takes the toe back to pit lane. Terminal damage to the number 20 car. Well, that was a wonderful battle for all of four seconds. Yeah, commentator's curse right there. There's oh, a little bit of a wiggle there up out of Britain's, up over Hilltop, and Leon Penn makes his way past Pennington. Now, Pennington won't be too worried about that move being made as we get to see a replay. Oh, dear, that's... Nose of a car into a wall on the exit of Nickerbrook. 
as we carry on. But uh, yeah, uh, here's that that incident then for Grove, and it's just the side to side, ever so slight, um, possibly some net code there potentially. Uh, it's hard to tell, but um, Grove ends up in that tyre barrier a uh, fair rate right of knots, and that'll be his race done. Urban check as well on pit road so that must have been who we saw in the wall and the exit of Nickerbrook. Jamie Moon up ahead of Kane Bahalabert and making the move through turn one. That's great stuff there from Moon. One of the beneficiaries of the re reverse grid of course. Well that's the same as the case for Halibut but you don't tend to see beneficiaries of the reverse grid actually being able to gain positions in the early portions of the race. So that is uh, fantastic there uh, for Moon and has already gapped Halibut very very slightly on the way in towards the hairpin here. Halbert's Hel going to gain a little bit back through the middle of the corner there. But that was fantastic there for Moon and starts to give chase now to Sedgwick. Because Sedgwick's only seven tenths of a second further down the road. who has been managing the gap rather well so far, although that's a bit of a mistake there for Moon. It will give a slight run to Halliburton, but I don't think Halliburton's going to have enough to try and capitalise on this one down towards his lobs. And in fact, he does stay in line. Meanwhile, side by side, or at least very briefly behind, as Chadwick tries to work his way through, slides the car through the exit of the corner. That's one thing you don't really want to be doing, especially if you're thinking long game. And Chadwick still can't make, a way, make his way through an Emery. Now, the problem for Chadwick here is that Emery finished pl uh, third place in that last race and had some good pace as well. Uh, to overtake around a track like this, you need to be like half to three quarters of a second difference between the two of you lap on lap to be able to get that, that, that run on people and, and get the move done. So Chadwick is in a difficult place, but he's also in a difficult place because he's got Charles Rainford behind, who quite frankly isn't the respecter of anybody's egos out there. He's out there to race for fun. He's the guest driver this week once again he impressed us finishing second last time out in the second race at Snetterton Only, he was keeping up with Sedgwick for pretty much all of the race as well to be fair to him as well so don't count out Rainford getting involved in uh, Will Chadwick's race here I mean there's definitely a possibility of that happening that's for sure he was four tenths of a second faster on that last lap alone was Rainford so Emery not really, uh, not really picking up the pace and sort of trapping Chadwick behind here for the moment. They're both going faster than Halliburton here for the moment, though, so that might be a battle that's closing up. Meanwhile, Chadwick looking to the outside once again into his slot. He's going to get squeezed a bit. And he keeps him as well. It is, remains behind for now, but you can see the defense that Emery's putting up and how much it's slowing the both of them down and putting them back into the clutches of that 99 behind. Yeah, it's you, you're not going to make the move around the outside of Hislops and the entry of Hislops. You need to go down the inside into Hislops to make that one work. Get the run out of the Druids. That's where Chadwick can do it and look to the inside of Lodge as there's that DCW racing car of James Parker heavily into the wall. And again, Chadwick's getting held up. He'll be getting frustrated here. He can't let this affect him mentally, though. Rainford... Cup and Peacock are all catching up to them now. This is a five-car train for fourth place. Oh, and that run through turn one as well for Chadwick. Gets himself just that little bit closer, but now his mirrors are full of Rainford. That number 99 has caught them up, and here comes the battle once again. Finally, Chadwick getting himself significantly alongside in towards the kink. Emery looking for the up and under to try and get a line in towards the hairpin, but he breaks early and backs out of it. It's triggered a move behind, though. Thomas Cope and Ollie Peacock going wheel to wheel through the exit of the corner. They almost make contact, but they narrowly get away with it. But finally, Chadwick is through, but it required a lot of work. And oh, Joe! Joe. Oh! Job at the Shell Hoyle Airpin. Uh, I think that's going to be his day done in terms of any hope of trying to score any points as uh, we go through the left hander then. And this is what happened to Job. Looks to the inside. Oh, he's gone a little deep there. And uh, he's affected himself there. 
uncharacteristic move there um, from Job. Maybe that was a Sebastian Job move from six years ago, not not from the recent couple of years yeah. though, because he used to be one of those ultra aggressive drivers. Still is in some respects, but he's a lot more measured these days. But I remember when he was sort of like one of these young up and coming drivers that he would go for every single move under the sun and would sometimes make a bit of a hash out of it. Yeah, I, I found out the hard way racing him in touring cars <laughs> when he was like 14, 15. So uh, yeah, it's, um, he, he is an aggressive driver and he can pull it out of the bag if he needs to. I think it was crucial for Chadwick to, to make that move on Emery. He got the great run out of Cascades and making that move. And Emery was clever. He realised you don't go too wide through Island Bend because you're just going to slow each other down and you're potentially going to end up, uh, like Sebastian, uh, ended up on lap one into, uh, into the wall there. So he played it smart, did Emery. He realises he's onto a good haul of points here. And he could still... I think he would have liked to have tried to hang on to the coattails of Chadwick. But the problem is, Chadwick has just got so much more pace over him. Yeah, Chadwick is well, gapped Emery by a second now. So that's how much he was getting held up by Emery. Even though Emery, like you said, he finished P3 in, in that last race. So it's not, not a slouch whatsoever. It's just that, at least at this stage of the race, Chadwick knows what the situation is. He knows that Job has been having problems. This is a massive opportunity for him to try and uh, reduce that points difference in the championship nothing other well if he can get himself a race win here that would do absolutely absolute wonders for his championship because unlike Sebastian Job he hasn't had uh, a points finish less than six points uh, in this race so far and at this point Job is on for two zero point scores yeah he is uh, and that's where the championships can change as we said we're, we're coming up to that halfway point of the championship and uh, it's all about carrying momentum job had the momentum in those first two weeks of the championship and then there's just the second races the last two weeks have just really caught him out out there and uh, he's, he's struggled a little bit and yeah he's down in what 18th place right now in terms of pros so on the points down to eighth place per um, per category, all the Peacock in eighth place is the last of the point scoring pros. So Job would have a lot of time to gain to try and even challenge for points. Yeah, and and with 13 minutes on the clock, yeah, I mean if it was an hour, then maybe, but 13 minutes, yeah. Um, uh, unless something catastrophic happens, probably not going to happen for Sebastian Job, despite him being a driver of his caliber, but. You can see this battle here going through his lobs. There's a little bit of a train developing, uh, well, train still existing, excuse me, between uh, R uh, Rainford, Cope, and, and uh, Peacock as well. Uh, there they are. Uh, Peacock trying to get himself onto the back of this one. Of course, these are uh, the positions, the final points paying positions in the pro class, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's as we pointed out, you know, the six through to eight, you, you're squabbling over, yes, it's three points for six but it's still three points uh, that you're going to be gaining in the championship so they will want to cope and peacock will want to make their way past here that is without a shadow of a doubt but um you know we're we're past the halfway point of the race this is where if you've been able to pressure a car in front and don't forget actually rainford he isn't scoring points in this he's the, he's the guest driver so actually Leon penn is going to be the last of the point scorers in pro uh, it's just that Rainford get classified as a pro in these races. Indeed, there's uh, a little bit of a swap around there. Someone was off in the background there. Didn't quite see or spot who that one was. Job's able to uh, improve position up into P16 overall now as a result of that driver further down the field going off. Was that Garibaldi I, potentially? I think it was Merckx actually. He was okay. uh, slow on my track map and he is fallen all the way back to the last of the uh, the lead lap runners there he is that distinctive livery let's have a look at uh, what happens on the way down the hill oh, car just not wanting to comply spat him towards the outside of the circuit and that's just the, the, the well that's the only decision that you really have there the other the only other option is try and commit to it a little bit too much and have a spin rather than just an off-track excursion yeah you, you've minimize 
the incident that you're going to have at that point. Unfortunately, yeah. they do have the uh, the Foster circuit that goes straight on there, so you can use a little bit of asphalt to uh, to get yourself slowed down. Rainford is coming under great pressure from Thomas Cope and from Ollie Peacock here for sixth place. Uh, remember that Cope is effectively in sixth place in terms of championship points. Um, the lead race as well, that's got really close between the two leaders. I'm looking at our timing tower here. Less than two tenths of a second. Sedgwick is coming under some serious pressure from Moon. Yeah, Moon has been incredible over the course of this race too. Now look at the run he got through the kink there as well. But it was well positioned on the defense there for Sedgwick to try and deny the opportunity of a lunge into the hairpin. So Sedgwick maintains the race lead for now, but this is going to be hot fought here because Jamie Moon's on a massive charge and looking to try and grab himself a race win here as well. There's a battle for P3 going on behind as well because Halliburton and uh, Chadwick are now relatively close together on circuit and Chadwick's already showing the nose down in towards his lobs. You can see both of the battles there on your screen as they follow their way through his lobs now. It's great to see these drivers still within close proximity with nine and a half minutes left to go. So still a lot of fighting potentially in the future here, or even in the immediate future. Yeah, this is uh, going to be an intriguing end to this race. That is for sure. But the two leaders, they're... Uh, They'll, be care they'll need to be careful not to slow each other down um, in fighting because that will allow Kane Halliburton. Oh, will Chadwick move to the inside of Hodge Corner? That is potentially going to be big. Can he keep alongside going into Old Hall? The answer is yes. But Halliburton's going to get the run out the corner. Oh, they get so close coming off. Inches between the two as they go down the hill, still side by side, still with the overlap. That only fizzles out now as they head their way through Cascades, but with the wider line, Chadwick will get a little bit of a better run here coming up towards that left-hand kink of the island bend. Turn number four, now onto the bricks, into the hairpin. Halliburton's out, broke himself. He loses the position to Chadwick and maybe even gives Emery a chance to try and uh, uh, to st stab the knife in a little bit better, uh, a little bit more. Uh, did he outbreak himself? Um, it was uh, it was mighty close between Chadwick and uh, and Halliburton, but yeah, Halliburton just just missing his braking, getting on the wrong line as well, going into uh, into the Shell Oil's hairpin. So that's up to third place now for Will. He, he really, if he wants to have as bigger impact as possible on his championship now he's got seven and three quarter minutes to catch up three and a half seconds to jamie moon he's capable of 54 nines the race leaders have been doing uh, not 54 nines excuse me uh 34 nines the leaders have been doing 35 sixes 35 fours so there's still a chance here that uh, uh that's uh, that chadwick could catch at this stage, although saying that the leaders are just to come across the line here, uh, do 35 ones, 35 two. So this lap's going to be a little bit slow for Chadwick, of course, but due to the side by side battle. But if he can lop off still a couple of tenths of a second a lap, keep himself within those 34s, then this race win is not too far out of the question, even with seven minutes to go. I think it's just a little bit too much too late. I think it was that initially getting held behind Matt Emery that, that cost him. He's onto the podium, which is still some good points nonetheless. But yeah, I just think it was getting stuck behind Matt Emery for the length of time that he did cost him a potential race win here. But these two, of course, could start getting at each other's throats and uh, slowing each other down and allow Will to catch up in this. Craig Williams is dropping down the order, I see, as well. So issues for, uh, for Craig. Oh, big issues off the circuit, having to rejoin back on. A little bit about further back, Adam states the on pen, getting close in towards his lops there. The 17 trying to get the drive out of the corner, trying to open up opportunities towards the very back on end of this lap. But it is still relatively difficult to get it done through uh, the latter portion of the racetrack here. Six minutes left to go. Higgins still in uh, the AMCLASS leads there. And class lead a little closer than it was perhaps in uh, race number one. Three drivers within 
relatively close contention, even though it's about a second the gap each between the three of them. But it's all possible that it's going to be closing up by the time this race is done. Meanwhile, oh, wide, very, very wide uh, goes Halliburton there, but is able to keep himself uh, ahead of Emery there for the moment. But that was a mistake that could have lost the position there and then given Matt Emery a very easy one. Uh, he could have potentially done that, but um, you know, well done to hold on to that for uh, Halliburton. Worth pointing out, Jamie Rushworth, um, He's having a little bit more of a consistent race here today than he has done in previous rounds. And uh, he's getting himself some good points in terms of the AM Championship. And uh, second place in class right now, doing himself uh, 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 some good stuff there for, uh, for the Pure Sims Esports driver. Hislops once again, Halliburton to stabilize things just that little bit more if he has any hope of holding on to p4 here emery of course you know didn't really have the pace uh, compared to will chadwick but in this particular battle things a little bit more equal and there's a chance that emery could promote himself up into fourth place here halliburton's done very very well indeed to try and maintain positions after starting in p2 but it's going to be a big ask for him in the final minutes of this race Meanwhile, you got this uh, bit of a train for P9 as well, involving your top three AM drivers, plus Leon Penn. Yeah, Penn's a little bit um, sort of out of position, isn't he? He's the last of the point scorers for Pro Championship. Uh, he's not anywhere near Ollie Peacock at the moment. He's a good four seconds back from Peacock. Sebastian Job, by the way, is only about, what, five seconds back from Leon Penn, but I think it's going to ask a bit much for Sebastian to catch up that time, plus get past Blakesley and Pennington, as well as get to Penn and overtake him. So, um, I think Job is going to not score any points this race, but it's not for the want of trying. It's been a really brutal race as this one. You know, we started with 22 on the grid. We've only got 18 left remaining here, so four cars on in pit road right now a good couple of drivers having problems not just in this race but in in the previous one as well the rate of attrition has been a little different here for Alton park than it has been to the rounds that we've uh, opened this season with so it's been a bit of a struggle and it is a very very tricky track it's a tricky track to even get around cleanly let alone go around quickly i'm amazed that drivers are able to do the latter there's not a lot of room for error here, especially given that you basically have no runoff. Yeah, yeah, it's a proper old school track as this, as Alton Park, and uh, it won't be uh, a venue that gets a, a, a grade one uh, FIA license. You know, it is an old school track as this, and uh, you've no asphalt runoff anywhere around this venue. It is all grass and gravel, so... Um, yeah, this circuit is a true test of a driver's ability to keep it on the grey stuff. And uh, if you do run wide somewhere, well, tough. Yeah, that, 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 and that's how racetracks should be, in my opinion. They should penalise people for running wide off of the track and uh, not abusing track limits. Oh, I've done uh, it again. <laughs> uh, something, 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 Pascal Magnicor. Um, something, something, something. Um, that's 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 what we're just gonna leave it at that because you, you get me started about rejoins, I get Paul started about track limits. That's you know that's the point of no return <laughs> at this point. But uh, moving very swiftly on, Kane Halliburton, of course, still trying to hold on to this P4. Back to Matt Emery has been doing very very well indeed. Emery still not close enough to strike at this stage, but just one small mistake, one small error could give him the opportunity meanwhile further back through the order you have adam state over committing to the chicane comes back on the circuit pen's able to avoid it and state loses a good couple of spots not just due to the set of circumstances but also due to the slowdown penalty he would have inevitably got himself by doing that meanwhile battle for the race lead that's uh, extended cedric's found a bit of pace here 
and uh, gets it up to nine tenths of a second. I think that with Adam State was him trying to squeeze Leon Penn going into uh, his slops and, and just that little contact unsettled his car and he couldn't get it slowed down in time for the, uh, the right hander at his slop. So that's why he had to take to the grass and... Uh, Copper slowdown penalty there, but you're absolutely right, Connery. Sedgwick, he's had to under undergo some pressure from Jamie Moon behind, but he's been able to really pull it out the bag for the second half of the race and to, to get himself a clear lead. Yep, it's been a great performance after the reverse grid for Jack Sedgwick. He's one of those drivers that will absolutely capitalise pretty much, what, 95% of the time on a, on a good reverse grid position. He's done so already so far this season after getting a race win in the second race last time out and he looks to repeat a race two performance here at Alton Park. Five seconds left on the clock. Of course, confirmation that this is indeed the final lap of things. The gap for the race lead extends up to 1.2 seconds now as Cedric is basically at home and clear. Still a little bit of an unknown about uh, P5 and uh, well, P4, 5 and back as well as we come towards the very end of this race. But those gaps just looking a little bit too big uh, to really get excited over in the final sector here. But for Jack Cedric, it's a stellar performance from a reverse grid pole position. He grabs race win number two of the season. The number 10 in next car, Jack Sedgwick takes the race to win here at Alton Park in the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup, Great Britain. Jamie Moon in second place and Will Chadwick grabbing himself a podium. Further back, you've got Gareth Higgins taking another AM class win. What a fantastic day it has been for the number 36 car. Jamie Rushworth with a decent performance here in race two as well finishing second in um, with Luke Pennington uh, in third there after attempting to recover from his trials and tribulations in race one. So that's race two done and dusted. It's our race meeting done and dusted, at least in terms of the racing, as we have a look at the unofficial order. So it's Jack Sedgwick by 1.3 seconds over Jamie Moon, who takes the race win here in race two. Then you've got uh, Will Chadwick who would have, even though it's a podium finish for Will Chadwick, I think Will would have been hoping for a little bit more than that, especially considering Job finishing so far down the order, scoring zero points. It was a good opportunity for Chadwick to gain uh, uh, the maximum points delta he could, but it was a very, very tough time for him, given that he got stuck behind Matt Emery for the majority of the first part of that race. Meanwhile, we've got Kane Halliburton in P4 with Matt Emery in P5. That was an interesting battle towards the end there, but Halliburton was able to hold on to that fourth place. Then you've got Charles Rainford, one of our guest drivers there, in P6 after another decent finish. You've got Thomas Cope in P7 with Ollie Peacock in P8. And then you've got your top AM driver, Gareth Higgins, once again there. P9 overall, P1 in AM. Then you've got Jamie Rushworth, P10 overall and P2 in AM. Then you've got Leon Penn there in P11 overall with Luke Pennington in P12. Adam Estate P13, Brandon Blakesley and Sebastian Job will round out the top 15 cars. Job scoring zero points for finishing there down uh, in P15 overall. He's outside of the top eight in terms of the uh, in terms of the pro order as well. Leo Garaboli, it was a tricky day for your AM class leader. Let's just say that. And, uh, it's going to require a little bit of a bounce back in our next round of the championship at Spa Franco Champs, believe it or not. We're going... Uh, uh, to uh, we're going to the, 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 the one of the most famous tracks in the world uh, for our next round of uh, the championship here as, as one of our quote unquote foreign rounds. Then we head, uh, then we get ourselves uh, P17 with Craig Williams, with Scott Mokes in P18, Josh Malin in P19, and James Parker P20. And then a lot of the drivers that had issues here today, uh, Eric Grove, P21, Urban Jake once again, another retirement, unfortunately, uh, for the number 39, down in P22. Then you got Lewis Ward there, P23, and uh, Josh Thompson did not take the start here in race two. So there we go. The championship changes just bit by bit once again. Another zero point finish for Sebastian Job, the leader of the pro standings here at the moment, narrows things up between himself and Chadwick there for that uh, for that pro class lead. That's not really what we expected coming into the day here, Paul. Yeah, it certainly was a, uh, a, a again, Sebastian just getting caught up in uh, in an instant in race number two. Um, 
given that how uh, it went through turn one and two, you know, him and Chadwick, they were fighting. Chadwick did not get the uh, the, the the race that he wanted. Um, uh, or the start that he wanted, should I say, that allowed Sebastian to come up alongside him. Sebastian's got that start hooked up beautifully, but yeah, another zero points in race number two. The race one points will help towards mm -hmm. those championship points and position, but certainly um, it will be not ideal. He, he's making life a little bit harder than it needs to be for Sebastian right now. He just needs to score points and consolidate his lead um, at the front. But I'm sure we will get to speak to the man who's in second place in the championship in just a few moments' time. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Let's just let's just bring him in now. Let's just do it now. Um, uh, Paul, do you want to take this one away, or do you want me to yeah, take well, the responsibility? <laughs> well, well I'll, I'll speak to Will. You know, we spoke before uh, between races, races one and two. But Will, you know, you said that you wanted to get a better start in that race, um, and then lo and behold, you're going into Casca, into Old Hall, and you look alongside you, and there's Sebastian again. Actually. My start was okay, but my shifters are going faulty. Um, oh, there and you go. I pulled, that's, uh, that's page number 379 of the Racing Driver Excuses. <laughs> I pulled second and it didn't pull, so I had to do it twice and I hit the limiter, which cost me the start. But I was able to keep out of Sebastian. I think he had a crash behind me, or he definitely wasn't there lap two, uh, which is really unlucky on his side. Um, but uh, I said it was hard to pass around here. I really gave it a good go to get up to the leaders, but. Again, I mean, at least I'm the only, I, I, I take pride in the fact that I'm the only guy to finish on the podium, technically, in every round. There's a few technicalities there, but in pro, <laughs> yeah. pro podium every round I've had. Uh, I, I will say that, um, yeah, was it was it the fact that you, you you did find it so difficult to get past Matt Emery that, that cost you the opportunity of fighting for second and first? I think, um, well, yeah, I mean, I lost loads of time and I think we saw the pace alter after, after I passed. Um, Matt was really quick in race one, but I think he struggled with the tyres or something in, in race two. And this track's so narrow and it's so hard to pass that when you're defending, you really have to be aggressive and, and try and force the other guy into a mistake to have any chance. I gave it a really good go. I'm, I mean, at least I managed to pass two people, but, you know, I, I needed... Really, I was hoping that Moon and Sedwick would have a fight because if they'd had a fight up front, you know, I could have maybe, maybe had a chance to close in a lot quicker, but... When they're just running laps, you know, I've only got maybe a two tenths advantage every lap, and it's just not enough to catch three seconds when I think six laps in at the end. Uh, and um, just very, very briefly, Will, we're going into the second half of the season now. How are you seeing yourself with with how things have gone in this first half? I think we've had a good start. You know, I've extended my lead over third again in that race, so I think that's a really good positive step. Um, and I closed in on Sebastian a tiny bit, but you know when you're getting two points for pole and you're winning the first race, no matter what happens in the second race, it's hard for you to close too much. Uh, I hate Spa though, so a bit awkward going into the next round. I know a lot of people will hate me saying that because everyone loves Spa, but I, I don't. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for spending time and coming to join us in the commentary booth here, Will, and all the best for the, the rest of the season. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Connery. Thank you, Arjuna, on the uh, production. There we go. It's, it's rare that a driver shouts out the production as well. <laughs> yeah, that's, I know. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. It never happens when I'm producing. Anyway, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that was uh, that was Will Chadwick there getting the consistent podium finishes as ever. But will that will be enough in terms of a championship win? That's that's the question. And uh, well, even with that zero point finish there in race two for Sebastian Job, he still will lead the championship at the end of the day. Um, by by a smaller margin, yes. However, still in the uh, in the prime position, and heading into Spa, like uh, like Will mentions, he's he's not a massive fan of it, but like I said, a lot of people are. That's going to be a different kind of racing to what we've seen at Autumn Park here, largely because of the slipstream fest that it can be. Well, especially when you're all running the same setup as well. You know, fixed setup series this and. Uh... These drivers will, um, you know, they'll have the opportunity to get a bit of slipstream, that is for sure. But yeah, two weeks time. Is that two weeks time? Really? Already? God, blimey. Yeah. This, this, this year is flying by. But yeah, that is uh, certainly going to be an intriguing round of the championship. Heading to the Arden Forest. Absolutely, it's going to be our, our sort of guest round, I guess. The, uh, the, the, the only non-UK track 
uh, on the schedule for, for this uh, year of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be frantic. It's going to be close as well because that draft block's just going to keep everyone in close contention. I mean, the vast majority of the field are pretty close on pace already. So that's just going to exacerbate things there uh, with the nature of racing that we see at Spa Franco Champs. But you know, we're at the midway point of the season now. There's still a good handful of rounds to go before we crown a champion, and things have tightened up a little bit here at the end of Alton Park. Not only in the Pro Championship between Sebastian Job and Will Chadwick, but also a lot of question marks going uh, in the AM Championship as well, with Leo Garibaldi having a pretty poor day, all things considered. But that's going to be all that we have time for here for the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Great Britain. I've been Conor Maddock, I've been joined by the lovely Paul Smith, and shout out once again to Arjuna Kankapati on the, the cameras as well. We'll see you in two weeks' time when we head to Spa.